Okay, Conrad Gracie, founder of uh, Pass Well. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about who you think you're going to need to know, so the people you've got now and looking forward to the future, um, is there a gap there in terms of the people that you think you're going to need to know to succeed? Um, definitely. I think uh, at this moment, because the business hasn't been established, um, I don't know many people in my industry. Um, and people that I will be looking at needing would be governments or councils um, or people in the schooling department um, to yeah, project my project forward and, and yeah, get it into the educational system if I want to go that way. Cool. In terms of uh, expertise, knowledge and your, you know, your past experience, mm -hmm. you can, what sort of gaps do you see there in terms of the, the knowledge that your organisation is going to need? Um, yep, uh, that's another one that I, I don't have that knowledge um, because I'm targeting kids age one, grade one to grade 12. Um, I don't have kids of my, my own. I am 30. Um, a lot of my friends, they all have infants and that. So it's a market that I'm not too well connected with. But um, in saying that, I do have a friend, who, a family friend who's a principal at a school and he's been trialling a lot of my... Um, my project and, and sort of giving me feedback and seeing how that works. Cool, and what about the technical skills? Are you okay I've got, that space? yes, I'm the graphic designer, the creative director and the web developer and everything, so. Okay. Access to resources that mm -hmm. would be valuable to you. I imagine getting permission to work in and around schools and mm -hmm. that would be, is that, is that the difficult thing for you? Yes, um, at the moment, what I'm trying to do is just focus on what I can do without getting others involved. So I want to do educational creative classes, but I'm going to hire a space and keep the numbers small and, and work with students there. And then once I've tested it and um, yeah, really fine tuned the curriculum, that's when I'll take it to schools. But yeah, it is a, it is a massive leap from having it sort of self funding it and doing it myself as opposed to getting it into schools. One of the issues we talk about with the, the guys is cognitive legitimacy. So this is the extent to which if you walked into a bar and someone said, Conrad, what do you do? Yes. And you said, oh, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, to what extent do you, does your, um, your idea here have that taken for granted aspect in society? To what extent are you having to educate people? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I find that my project, because it is so broad, um, there are so many elements of it, it is quite hard to pinpoint when people say, what is it that you do? Um, so, yeah, definitely I think that education for young people, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's lacking a little bit of, um, it's not engaging as much, I don't think. There's a lot of sort of stuff in the media that's not important and not relevant. Um, so, yeah, I in ways that people take it for granted. I think it's hugely taken for granted. So. Okay. Uh, in terms of approval by uh, other key stakeholders, mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned you have a friend as a principal. Mm -hmm. um, other stakeholders in society, do you think that what you're doing would be typically approved of, that it's a, an appropriate thing to be doing? Uh, is there a need to get that approval from certain stakeholders before you can further develop? Um, definitely. Um, I think it's 100% approved of. Um, it's educational, it's, it's touching on topics that affect all of us and all of our futures. Um, and then, yeah, it's really sort of giving the next generation a voice and, and teach it, you know, asking them what, what do they want to do about it, you know, the information's there and, and it's, yeah, just getting them to sort of act on it and, and yeah. And yeah, for stakeholders, yeah, 100%, I think it's, it's something that is, can develop into apps and, you know, school, into the school system or a TV show or something like that. So there's so much sort of room um, to take this project for stakeholders or anyone interested. Yeah, so. cool. In terms of the space you're working in, mm -hmm. do you think you've got a good handle on how it changes? So new ideas that come into this space? Mm -hmm. Ideas that come in and they're rejected, they can't get traction. Do you think you have a bit of a good sense for why things come in and succeed and why things come in and fail? Um, yes, I, I've been working on this project about 12 months now um, and it's changed completely from when I first started and it constantly sort of grows and evolves. And um, I think in the world with technology, 
you know, and all that sort of thing moving so fast. It, it is something that you sort of have to try and stay on top of in regards to changes. And, you know, a new app could come out tomorrow that's doing the same thing and, you know, just wipe you out. So I think that because the world has become smaller, a lot of people are thinking along similar lines and that you, is a threat. Do you think in terms of what matters the most of being able to get that traction to, to move forward and grow, mm -hmm. is it about building that sense of community? Is that the Definitely, 100%. Yeah, I think through the one aspect, which is the creative classes, I really want to build kids that are different. You know, I, I want to teach kids that don't learn that that school educational way and, and yeah I really want to kids can submit artwork and submit their own robots and, and yeah and I'm going to be putting on cleaning up events and creative events and everything so it's about creating a real yeah a community of, of sure. people. In terms of things that you already identify that work against your idea what are the sort of environmental factors elements that actually make it hard for you to do this? Um, I would, well I would say that people not hard, but people becoming a lot more aware and bigger corporations are, are touching on a lot of topics that 12 months ago weren't really touched upon as strongly. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that works against me because they've been around for a lot longer and they're more established. Um, so I've got to make that point of difference so that people will come and look at my site over, you know, um, Greenpeace or something like that. Yeah. So. And, and money, is that a, a challenge? 100%, yeah. yeah. Budget at this point, um, that's why with the website and the art classes, I am starting small. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I'd, it would be an app if I had $100,000 at this yeah. point. So I've done what I can and then I want to pitch it and get some funding. Cool. So. All right. What, what, what are the things that are working in your favour? What are the things in the, your environment that you mm -hmm. sort of sense are actually um, providing the availability of resources that will actually help? Well, I think technology is a big one. Um, as I said, apps and smartphones and people have the internet at the touch of a hand, you know, and, and um, yeah, I can send out notifications, I can send emails when I make new posts, I can use Instagram, um, Facebook, which is constantly sort of, yeah, people are using throughout the day, so technology yeah. is definitely a big one that helps. We, we talk about that process of creating value and then obviously attempting to capture it. Mm -hmm. and if you think about you know, the old way, you take something of little value, transform it into something and hopefully sell it for a higher value. So sure. value chain, value shop is where we use the same resources but for different people in different ways to solve their different problems. Sure. And then we have value networks where, as you said, the technology, the internet mm -hmm. enables us to sort of link up in in what ways do you think you're planning to create value across those three different mediums? Um, I think value, yeah, value in the content um, and value that it is so open to expand. Um, it really can go down. I've had people approach me from, from ABC and SBS to make kids shows. I've had, you know, app developers that have shown interest. So um, I think the diversity of where it can go and where I can take it is a strength for it. Cool. In terms of you designing your platform and allowing others to win with you, mm -hmm. is that something that's sort of in, the, in your mind? Is it sort of about how you can become a successful entrepreneur or are you sort of planning for others to win along the way as well? Um, I think, yeah, definitely for others to win. I think, you know, we're all in this together and it's, it, I'm not the only one doing it. I'm not the only one trying to educate people on, on problems that are happening globally. Um, and yeah, I think I'm taking content from bigger companies and processing it down so young people can understand it. So, and I do reference them, you know, I'll reference Greenpeace or um, WWF or, you know, wherever the articles come from. So there is a lot of sort of helping out and, and everyone sort of, you know, and then in turn, I, I hope to sort of get some promotion through those guys for directing traffic there. So, okay. but yeah, lots of wins for everyone. I think at the moment your thinking and development, you, you see that as being more short term and long term in terms of what you can actually do tomorrow. Sure, I think lo um, short term. I just want to get that right, and then I think if you know that's why it's taken me twelve months of just redefining it, um, and then you know short term. 
Yeah, I think short term strengths will lead into long term yeah sure. growth. So. And do you see it being targeted to any specific um, children, or mm -hmm. is it sort of pretty much anyone out there sort of you want to lower age? Are you trying to aim mm -hmm. for a smaller? Um, I think anyone can get involved. Um, it is very playful and, and the character aspects and, and that make it more based on younger children. But, yeah. you know, I think it's not like I've learnt so much. I'm 30 and I've learnt so much from researching and, and putting the content into this that I don't feel there's any harm in, in other people or people that have that sort of creative mind would, would find this very interesting and, mm -hmm. yeah. Intrigue them. So. Well, our last question comes brings us to this issue of energy. Mm -hmm. So, can you think of other things that happen externally to you, independent of you, that mm -hmm. you can tap in and use to your advantage? Yeah, definitely. Well, as I was just saying, with these bigger established organisations that are out there, you know, saving whales or stopping tree logging um, and getting the content they're helping push my project forward and, and sort of giving me that content that I can then recycle and, and reuse. So I think definitely, um, yeah, it's okay. all about sort of, yeah, reaching out and getting little bits of content that are relevant from bigger companies and, and reusing that. So. so any last words for our students in terms of how you like them to approach with you? Are you wanting them to sort of cut loose and come up with the craziest ideas they can come up with? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, that's, that's the side of the project that's great, that is, it, it is creative and it is story-based and, you know, I just, I don't want to go down that, that sort of mainstream um, field at this stage um, and I think, yeah, they can sort of come back with some feedback or some direction or something that they've seen that, that I might be able to sort of get involved with and that would be great. Cool. Wonderful. So, thanks, guys.